guys and welcome back to my channel. My name is Johanna and for those of you who are new here, welcome. And for those of you who are returning, welcome back. Here on my channel, I do planner and planner related videos, DIY tutorials, budget videos, and the occasional new release video of items that I've listed to my Etsy shop. And if that is of interest to you, please consider subscribing to my channel. And if you hit that little notification bell, you'll always be notified of when I do load a new video. And if you could also comment, like, and share, that does help me grow my channel. That would be amazing. So this is the second part of my Happy Nietzsche accessory series. Now the first one I showed was how to make a folder that is sized to fit your Happy Planner half sheet happy notes. So this one is specific to this one. Although I suppose you could make this size folder and then put it in your classic. Cause again, it is on the nine rings, so it would fit. It just wouldn't be as wide as your classic page. But if you wanted to make these as sort of a cash envelope system, cause again, in that video, I show how you could actually hide some cash in there that would work. Although this particular method is a open dashboard. So again, depending on your functionality, you want you may want to put it here in your half notes, or you may want it to be a slim folder in your classic or even the big, because it, it will fi fit either one of those. Uh, today's uh, accessory is going to be on how to attach a charm to your happy planner. Now this one I will be sizing for the half sheet happy notes, but it's actually something you can make for any of the sizes, whether it's the mini or the classic, the half note or the big. This would actually even work with the micro. You just want to make sure you adjust for the length of your dangle. Now this is a um, clip that I have available in my shop. It was just handy so that I could show you for the tutorial um, how it actually would work. I've yet to test this out, so we're gonna actually learn this together. In theory, it sounds like it's going to work, but if it doesn't, then I won't load this. <laughs> but what you're gonna need is something that's pretty sturdy, um, either a heavier weight plastic. This is some off cuts from, if you can tell this is the wrong, wrong cover. So I just kept these um, because you want something that is sturdy. Um, and if you don't have either of these, and this is just an off cut of a plastic placemat that I used to make some uh, covers for the Happy Nietzsche. This is what was left over. This I think would work well. We'll go through the tutorial together, and then after this, I'll give you one more option uh, that you could use in order to make this. Now, this one I'll need to cut because it still has the punches. This one does not, so I won't need to cut it. Now, depending on what you're making it the size for, you're going to be you're going to want to be cognizant of how long it is. Like this would not fit in a mini, but this would be perfect in your half sheet happy notes in your classic or your big, but in a mini, you'd wanna cut it down. Again, this tutorial is specific to the half notes, but once you learn the basic on how to do it, then, you know, the sky's the limit on what you make it for, okay? Now, because I have difficulty cutting a straight line, I'm gonna use my cutter, and I just really need to make a straight line. It doesn't really matter how big this is. At least it doesn't matter to me. And this one is already cut. And so that's all I'll need that for. Oh no, there's this one. So again, I'll just cut a piece off. It doesn't matter the width of it so long as it's not as wide as 
the product you're putting it in. So if you're using your it in your half sheet, then you don't want it to be any wider than four and a quarter. Uh, if you're using it on your mini, then I believe that's like five and a quarter. If you're using it on your classic, that's seven. I mean, again, you get the picture. You don't want it longer than the width of your paper, and you don't want it taller than the height of your paper. Now, from here, it's actually pretty simple because what we're going to be doing is just rounding our corners because you know how I feel about sharp corners. Now, this one might be a little bit difficult because it is clear, but it should be easier on the other two. And round, you don't need a big round, you just don't want a sharp point. And then these, there's a round here, but the other three are not. So we're just gonna round them and round this, and same with this one. And now I have a corner chomper, but again, I'm trying to make this so that anyone with at least some access to these things will be able to make this. Now let's show it on this one. Um, I've got a single hole punch and what you want to do is punch so that you're getting, why can I see this, um, that you're getting as far in the corner as you can without actually, well and this one's thicker so you could actually punch right here in the laminate but let's see how it works if we punch right in the middle there because why that's going to make a difference is whatever you're clipping to it has to be able to get over all of that. Now this lobster claw is rather big, so that should not be a problem. I can keep it open. And so where you're going to get the sticking point is it doesn't want to close. Okay, so now it's closed, right? So now that we have it on, now we need to punch it so that it goes in there. So again, be aware of where you punch your hole. Because of that problem right there. All right, so let's see if we punch it closer. If it's that difficult to close it. Because what you don't wanna do is you don't wanna get yourself a charm and then lose it because it wouldn't close right. So definitely works better when it's closer. This one, I don't know if you can see it. And laminate on laminate is probably not the best thing, but this one has quite a bit of space between the hole and where the laminate ends. This one does not. So let's use this as our tester, because again, that looks cute, so that we can put it in here. Now this one, you'll want to actually place it so that it sticks up rather high past your top ring because we want it to be able to dangle on the outside. Now my, my charm is rather short, so it doesn't give you the full weight of how cute this can be. But if we put this all the way up there, then you can see it dangles. Again, if you've got a really long one, then it's, it looks even cuter, but for demonstration purposes, I think that's sufficient. So what we'll do is we'll put it pretty high, and then we'll just mark our holes. Now this is not something I'm going to be putting in my shop. This is really just to give you some ideas on how to make some accessories. Now again, this one is specific 
to the Happy Nietzsche because that's what the series is called. But you could obviously make this for your mini, your micro, your big, your classic. It would all work just so long as it wasn't wider than your paper or longer than your paper, okay? And because we have the guidelines, it makes it nice that that is a straight line. So we're going to just punch right there. And because this is a Happy Planner cover, it is rather thick. With a single hole punch, it goes right through. Um, this would not go through a Happy Planner punch, so don't even try, because I did. <laughs> it nearly broke my machine. I think this would go through an arc punch, but again, it might be pushing the boundary. But it definitely works with a single hole punch, and I think that was like a dollar or two from Target. And then just cut your slits. so that it actually goes on your rings. It doesn't have to be precise. Um, I don't know that you would use this so much as a bookmark um, and more as just the thing that's holding your charm because if you move it towards the back, well, let's test it. So if we have it up here in front, then it hangs like that. If you move it towards the back, then yeah, it, it hangs more towards the back. So wherever you put the placement of that, it's going to determine how this is going to look. Now again, depending on what charm you're using, if you're making your own, uh, depending on how long the charm is, depending on how big the lobster claw is, that's all going to determine how this is going to dangle. This one, if I take this off, I can show you. There's only the one jump ring connecting it to the lobster claw. So if you notice from this here to the actual charm itself, there's just only that one little ring. If you have a charm that dangles, then it probably would work better because you're not butting up against, because that's basically what's happening, that it's butting up against right at the top. But if your dangle is longer, then that's not so much of a problem. Let me see if I can find something to show you what I mean. So this is a traveler's notebook that I have in my shop. That's not important. What's important is I made this charm, as I do with all of my traveler's notebooks, to go on the side. Now this one is a lot longer than this one, but the lobster claw is a lot smaller. So again, depending on the size of your lobster claw, you'll want to play around with how big the hole is. Now this one, yep, it closes. I don't know if you can see that, but it actually closes. So it still works. And if we click that on, and close it, we have a much more pronounced dangle. It's hard to see, but there it is. But if you put it farther in the front, because you could use it as a bookmarker, but again, like I said, if you use it as a bookmarker and it keeps moving farther back, it just changes how it dangles in your planner. You see this one, it almost dangles the full length of it. Now I don't have separate, I mean the only charms that I have as separate items are these right here because these are really easy to put together and I love the Harry Potter theme of this because that's um, Hedwig with the 
Hogwarts invitation. These I only make to go on my traveler's notebook. I don't make them um, just as dangles to go on planners and it's not something I plan on doing because this is very time consuming. Between this and all of the stuff that I put in my traveler's notebook, that's why it costs what it does. Because I, I know I've seen people on YouTube who can buy really cute um, charms already assembled. I can't find them here in Hawaii, or I can, but they're on arm and a leg. <laughs> and I would rather just pick up the different charms and beads and, and things and put it together myself. But it is rather time consuming. So again, I don't plan on making this for my shop, um, but if you want one, they are attached <laughs> to Traveler's Notebooks. Okay, so let me put this away because it actually doesn't belong to me. Now that's how you can make one of them with just an off cut of a Happy Planner cover because I did cut down uh, big covers to fit my Happy Nietzsche. But if you don't have that, again, it would work just fine. Again, this is a little bit floppier, but it, I mean, it is rather sturdy. So you could just punch a hole rather close to the edge because again you want your lobster claw to close. Yeah, we want to punch on this edge. We want it as close to the spine as we can get it. Now that may eventually break because that top um, portion is rather small. But again, you'll, you'll want to test it out because the bigger the lobster claw, the less that's a problem. But if you have a lobster claw like that, then that could be problematic. And again, you'll want it to stick up rather high, mostly because you want it to get it, well, okay. I'm assuming, <laughs> I guess I should backtrack. I'm assuming that you have some sort of cover on here because it basically needs to get up and over the cover. But if you just have um, your half sheet, then really you just need it to dangle. So take that into account, depending on what it is that you have. This may need to be super tall to get over your cover, or it may just be single like this and you could actually have it rather low and you may want to actually have it in the back. I don't know what you have, so I don't know how to best advise you, but that's the advice I can give you, all right? So, and then this one you would do the same way where depending on how high you want it, you would mark your holes. Now, because this does not have a nice little line, you're just going to be a you're just going to want to be aware that you're going to want your holes lined up as straight as you can make them because if your holes are not straight it will be difficult to turn yeah yeah <laughs> so I'm not gonna do it I mean I just I just showed you how to do it, it, it it's exactly the same way you don't need it this long. If you just wanted to save yourself, you could cut it. Because really the only purpose of this is to hold your dangle, right? The only purpose of this is to hold your charm. So you don't need it to be very long. But if you wanted to use this as a dashboard because it is rather slick, I mean, this just gives you some extra space to put it, to make it functional. It works. You can make it as long or as short as you want. This is not gonna go on my shop. This is not something that I'm going to sell. But again, if you want to make something for yourself, you certainly can do that. Now, if you don't have an off cut of a happy planner cover and you don't have either access to some plastic placemats or you just don't have them, then the other alternative that I was thinking of is you could laminate a file folder because again, you want something that is rather thick. So this is actually five inch laminate on a file folder. And just to give it a little bit extra, um, not security, but stability. I also used my cropo dial and put an eyelet in it. Now I don't know if this will close. Let's see. Yeah, so that closes and it's secure. Because so long as it closes like that, 
where it meets up against each other, then the likelihood that this is going to fall out is very low. But if it doesn't close, like that very first time I, I tried to use it on here, then the likelihood that it's gonna fall and get lost is higher. And again, depending on what type of planner you have, meaning does it have a traveler's notebook style cover? Does it have the hardbound cover? Does it have no cover except the, the, the top one? Then that gives you an idea of where you can put your dangle. Because if it's just like this, this probably would look super cute somewhere in the middle. like that. Again, if it were longer, it'd be more interesting, but just to give you for demonstration purposes. And then that way you don't have to worry about your rings. You don't have to have strings. I mean, it's just, it's its own thing. It does work as a bookmark. And if it doesn't sit in your actual planner, it actually closes flat like that. Again, it just really depends on what kind of system that you have and how far you want your dangle to fall. Yeah. <laughs> I'm hoping this is useful. I mean, I don't use these because I throw this in my purse and the really cute clips that Christy had made me, they don't even stay secure even with this on it because it's just jostled in my purse too much. Um, so I, I never zhuzh mine up. I don't put the little crochet bow. I don't do any of that because um, it's just gonna get all mangled in my purse. But for you guys, if you are not taking this on the go, or if you don't have to worry that you have to keep your purse in your lap because you take the bus, you know, if you're throwing this in your bag but it goes in, in the car seat next to you, then, I mean, you're probably fine. It's just the way that I commute to and from work it just it's it's going to get mangled so I, I don't even put all the fancy stuff on there but i did want to give you some ideas on how you could make your own charm holder slash bookmark for your half sheet happy notes for your mini for your micro again you would just scale it up and down depending on the size of your planner and then take into account whether or not you're going to use it with a cover like this if you've made your own cover if if you have the zip kind i think house of flynn will fit the half sheet happy notes so again depending on what it is you're using then you're going to want to uh, make your whole and your holder accordingly. For this one, I won't put sizes because again, it just really depends on what you have and what you're using. Really, the only thing that's important is that you use something with a bit of sturdiness that you can punch. Because if it's too thick and you can't punch it, then it sort of defeats the purpose. If the hole is too small or too big and you can put your charm in, that defeats the purpose. So it is a little bit of playing around. I don't know if this could actually be helpful to you, but at least you can look at some of your products a little bit differently um, and see if maybe you can create something for your own. Again, I'm not making any of this for my shop. It's a little bit too time consuming and I already have enough products in there that are just sitting there. All right, guys, let me know what you think. Is that useful? Did it help you? Is it more confusing? I don't know, I am, I am curious because because I'm not gonna give you any measurements because it really just depends on what you're making it for. I don't know how useful this is or if any of you are even interested in making this. But if you are, I would definitely love your feedback below. It is after work. I really should stop filming tutorials after work, but I, I ran out of time this weekend. That's it for me for now. I will be doing one more video in the series, at least there may be a couple of more. Um, but that's it for me for now, guys. And as always, Aloha.